All right, guys, let's get this study guide done for our test. <clears throat> All right, so what we're doing is we're going to put these properties. I'm going to take these properties and put them up here because I'm just matching, basically. So I'm just going to write these properties right here. All right, so I've got my properties. Now I'm going to look at the definitions. The order of terms does not matter. Order is the key word here. So order being the key word, that means I'm, my terms are going to be able to move. So that would be the commutative property. The grouping of the numbers can change. Grouping is my keyword here. And if it's grouping, it's associative. When you talked about the people you associate with and the group of people you hang out with. So the grouping is associative. Okay. Distribute the outside term throughout the parentheses. Well, of course, distribute there. That's going to be our distributive. Okay, the property, the product of any expression in one is itself or the sum of any expression in zero itself. So the product of any expression in one is is itself. Is itself means that the identity of that number is not going to change. So that's going to be our identity property. And then, of course, that one will be the multiplicative inverse, the product of a number and its reciprocal. Reciprocal, remember I told you, is the flip it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. When you did your keep it, change it, flip it, when you did that for dividing fractions, reciprocal is the flip it. So I'm going to write those in. Okay? All right, and I'll also get this loaded to the server so you can have the key when I post this. All right, so looking at this first one, 5 times 3m plus 2 equals 15m plus 9. What we've just done here is we've distributed this 5 into everything inside the parentheses. So that's going to be the distributive property. Two times three x times four in parentheses. Two times three, so the parentheses changed here. So our grouping changed here. That's the associative. Our parentheses changed. Five plus 12 plus 7, 5 plus 12. So that's also associative. Our grouping changed. The parentheses changed. When you see parentheses, you're either going to be looking for associative property or distributive property. So our grouping there changed. 6 plus 4, and then 4 plus 6, our numbers moved here. That's our commutative property. And then 7 times 8 equals 8 times 7 is also commutative. Here, the number's identity, this number's identity did not change. The 4's identity did not change. So this is the identity property. This is identity property of multiplication. This is identity of addition. And then 5 times 1 fifth equals 1. That's your reciprocal because that's really 5 over 1 times 1 over 5, which is going to give you 5 over 5, which is 1. <coughs> <coughs> that's how that works. All right, so move it on. Okay, the product of 7 and a number plus 1 is 50. The product of 7 and a number plus 1. So, that's going to be 7x plus 1 equals 50. 
solve it, we get 7x plus 1 equals 50. We subtract 1 from both sides. 7x equals 49. Divide both sides by 7. And x equals 7. Okay. This, to write the verbal expression, the product of 7, the product of 2 and a number plus 7 equals 13. So it's going to be very similar to what's right here, only the, the values are going to change. So the product of 2 and a number is 13. So now I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2. And x equals 3. Alright, the product of 8. The product of 8 and the quantity of 5 plus 4. The quantity of 5 plus 4 times the number is 72. The quantity of 5 plus 4, the quantity of that right there tells me that that's going to be in parentheses. So, 5 plus 4 times a number, that's 5 plus 4 times a number. And we need that quantity before we multiply 8. So, that's how that's going to look. The quantity of 5 plus 4, that tells me that I need this quantity before. And if I need this quantity before, then I have to put that in parentheses. So now, looking at this, that means that I've got to do my distributive property first. I've got to do my distributive property first. So 8 times 5 is 40, plus 8 times 4n is 32n equals 72. Now. Going back and just kind of reviewing what we did with two-step equations, if we were flying a drone, our drone would have to hover over the side of the equation where the variable is. So we've got our variable over here. This is our variable term. This is our constant term. All right? C comes before V alphabetically. That means I'm going to do C first. I'm going to have to get rid of my constant term first because I'm going to work in alphabetical order right here. That's a positive 40. So I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. And 32n equals 32. Divide both sides by 32. And n equals 1. Whoops. I should have solved it right there. I'll move these over when I put the key into the, but those should have been right there, sorry. The difference of eight times a number and 12 is 16. The difference of eight times a number and 12. Eight times a number is gonna be eight in. The difference means that I have eight in minus 12 equals 68. So I'm going to fly my drone, hover over here where my variable where my variable term is. Here's my variable term. Here's my Okay, I'm having storage issues. My phone keeps telling me I'm out of storage. I gotta do some cleaning up. Alright, but quickly, do I have any distributive property on the left? Yes, I do. So I've got to distribute. Five times x is five x. Five times twelve is sixty plus seven plus, or equals 7, plus 5x. So, now, do I have any combining like terms to do on the left or the right? I do not, but I do have variables on both sides. So I've got to move my variable. We typically move ours to the left, to the left, to the left. So, I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And this gives me 60 equals 7. Well, 60 cannot equal 7, so that is no solution. Okay? Here I'm going to, I have no distributive 
on either side. I have no combining like terms on either side, but I do have variables on both sides. So let's move this variable over. Let's move this plus, plus, let's zero it out over here. Well, it's gonna zero out over here too. So I get five equals one, which is no solution. I have combining like term, I mean, I have distributive property on the left, so I need to distribute. That's going to be 15R plus 6 equals 10R plus 6 plus 5R. Now, I don't have any combining like terms over here, but I have combining like terms over here. So this and this need to be combined. So I have 15R plus 6 equals 15R plus 6. Well, right there, I can tell you that I have um, many solutions because I have twins. And we talked about twins being multiples and multiples being many. So if I have twins, I have many. And I'm telling you, if I had twins, I would feel like I had many children. Twins is many. We can finish this by subtracting 15R from both sides. And what's going to happen is those are going to zero out and I get 6 equals 6, which still gives me those twins, which tells me I have many solutions. Right here, I can look at that right now and tell you that I got um, one solution because it's just a basic one-step equation. Plus 3 to both sides. 4y equals 12. Divide both sides by 4 and y equals three, so that's one solution, which is y equals three or three. Um, on, on many solutions, let me go back up here for a minute, you might see this as infinitely many. So keep in mind that word may be thrown in somewhere and don't let it throw you off if you see it. Infinitely many solutions. That means that infinite, to infinity and beyond, okay? So on the left, do I have any distributive? No. On the right, do I have any distributive? Yes. So I can't, I'm going to just move, hold on to these for a minute. Come over here and distribute. Negative 2p plus two plus six. Now I have to combine like terms because I have to combine on this side the P and the negative three P, which is gonna be two P, the 10 and the minus two, which is gonna be eight. Minus two P doesn't have anything. And this is a plus eight. If I add two P to both sides, I get 4p plus 8 equals 8. We know, I know that, we know that this is going to be 0. If the constant term, if the variable, if these are opposites and these are the same, notice right here that this, look right here, this 2p is a positive and that 2p is a negative. Those are opposites and those are the same. You're going to be, your answer is going to be 0. Because the 8s are going to zero out, leaving you 4P equals 0. And when you divide by that 4, P is going to be 0, which is one solution. All right. <clears throat> so that gets that. And this is going to be in several parts. It may seem a little choppy. But if you have any questions, let us know. Okay, I had some video and issues this morning, so this is going to be, sorry that this is in several parts, but <clears throat> um, I did not finish these, but I will get the get them put into the key when I upload it, but I think you got the idea because these two pages were basically the same thing, so I think you got the idea, but I'm going to go ahead and go over this back page and um, get this uploaded. I had some problems this morning, and I'm running out of time, so... Um, let's get this done. Sorry for that. All right. 2x plus 5 equals 13. So let's see, does this have, we can look at this right now um, and know that it has one solution. But we need to know what the solution is. So here's my variable term. Here's my constant term. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. <clears throat> All right. 
So there's my variable term, there's my constant term. So I've got to do this in alphabetical order. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And 8n equals 80. Divide both sides by n. I mean 8, sorry, n. 8 and n equals 10. Okay, so right here, we've got something in parentheses. Remember up here I told you that the quantity of five plus four times a number is how we show that in parentheses. So what do I have here? I have the product of five um, and the quantity of four times a number minus seven is negative 25. The product of five and four and the quantity of four times the number are minus seven. Okay, so I've got the distributive property here. 5 times 4x minus 7 equals negative 25. Got to distribute that first. I get 20x. Distribute that minus 35 equals a negative 25. Here's my variable term. Here's my constant term. I'm going to add 35 to both sides. So 20x equals 10, divide both sides by 20, and x equals 1 half. So, if I come back up here, x equals 7, x 